Hi, so this video is uh, going to focus on V-Ray lights. Uh, before we get into it, I just want to uh, mention that the model we'll be using comes from Infinite Realities. You can check it out here and download the same model and assets that I'm using for this tutorial at ir-ltd.net slash blog. If you scroll down, you'll see a lot of people have uh, provided their own lighting for the asset that he's uh, graciously provided. So uh, feel free to download it and uh, do lighting on your own. So very briefly, uh, to start with, I'm going to show you the very simple shader setup we have here. Um, the model ships with the geo and a few textures as a base for, for both color input. And this is a tangent space normal map and that can be applied to a uh, V-Ray material. All you do is you plug it into the uh, bump map slot and this pull down here lets you select between normal bump maps and normal maps in tangent or object space. So select that and you'll get the proper bump mapping in the material. The material um, is very simple. We're not, I'm not doing subsurface scattering or anything of the sort because that'll be a tutorial on its own later. So this is really a basic, very basic V-Ray material. But in brief, we have some reflection. Uh, the amount is down reasonably low. Reflection glossiness is, is cranked down a bit so that uh, we have very soft reflections. And we are using a Fresnel effect on this and the Fresnel is locked to the IOR of 1.322 which is approximately water-based material. Skin is mostly water-based so I'm using an IOR close to that. And so that's the material, just the material basics there, nothing uh, very special. So as for this pr pretty traditional lighting setup we have uh, what is in essence a three-point light setup but with one extra rim light over here. Um, we have a, a blue, let's take a look at the uh, shape nodes. We have a blue light for uh, lighting this side of the head. We have another blue light grabbing a little bit of rim edge on this side of the face. We have our key light placed up here, for fairly high angle and fairly standard, and then this Omni uh, or point light serves as a simple fill at somewhat low intensity. Now you'll note that, um, hopefully you'll note that most of my lights have a quadratic decay rate. That is fairly important for um, your lights to deal with V-Ray because V-Ray is, is trying to do things in a physically correct manner. You should always have uh, your lights set to uh, quadratic decay you'll notice that my two rim lights back here have no decay um, which is fine there as long as I don't set them too high I'm an intensity of one on both of these um, they're really just an effect light and uh, their distance shouldn't really matter in my scene I'm just using them to grab speculars and highlights so they're not as critical but for most key lights and fill lights it's it's fairly useful to have them in in uh, quadratic decay. Now for shadowing, you know, let's actually spawn a, a, a an RT render here. So there we go. Um, so shadowing on lights, um, you probably don't want to have super sharp shadows and let's check this out. For most for mental ray users, you'll note that in the you've already you already know that shadows down here under ray trace shadows have a light radius. If I set that back to zero, you'll see that my uh, shadows here get perfectly sharp. So you, the, your radius is almost like an area light in V-Ray, and Mental Ray respects this, and so does V-Ray. So if you plug in a light radius greater than one, your shadows will become softer. Um, you do need this effect won't happen unless you actually increase your the number of uh, shadow rays. Now. You'll notice RT isn't really refreshing properly, but believe me, you need to up the number of shadow rays just like you do in Mental Ray. This is the equivalent of subdivs in, in V-Ray. So as you can see, you can go 
straight ahead and light the way you traditionally do with V-Ray lights. Uh, I'm sorry, with uh, Maya lights, and you'll be okay. However, V-Ray does offer a few advantages with their own lights, so let's check those out. Okay, so now we've switched the scene over to a simple V-Ray light, and you can see it's the most simple possible um, lighting setup. We have one V-Ray area light that's overhead. Uh, we created that under the Create menu, so Create Lights, and in here you'll see four different V-Ray light types. We've got a sphere light, a uh, dome light, rectangle light, and an IES light. So we'll go over these, and uh, but for now this is the rectangle light, and uh, let's illustrate a few things with that. So let's start uh, another V-Ray RT session. All right, so you can see with one light and one bounce floor, uh, one floor with a bounce light coming off of it, we already have a pretty appealing light setup that uh, casts light quite realistically. Now it's a side effect, or not so much side effect, but a result of a linear workflow working in in uh, proper gamma compensation. So we're taking what traditionally would look more like this and uh, converting it to an sRGB from linear space and seeing what it would look like uh, in our V-Ray viewport. So very naturalistic lighting, very nice. So let's take a look at the attributes of this V-Ray light. So we've got our attributes. We have a uh, basic color modes, light color, um, temperature, an intensity multiplier and units. The U and V size, you can use that to adjust the, your relative size of your light as well and that will update, but uh, you can also just scale it in the viewport. So we're just going to do that for this demo. There was an early bug with V-Ray where uh, scaling lights with textures applied to them as uh, projection textures would cause some craziness depending on what mode you were in, but I think those bugs have mostly been worked out. So. Uh, I've, I've been scaling my lights and having fine results. So let's let's talk about uh, color mode. We've got normal color mode where you can select any color and uh, your light will update and that's fine. Um, a not much nicer and handier color mode for realistic lighting is uh, temperature. So you can plug in realistic color temperatures. 6500 would be a default um, daylight balanced or sunlight balanced scene. We can change that to a tungsten balance, say a 32 or 3400 temperature would be a more interior tungsten balanced. And likewise, you can crank it up even higher to uh, get into the more fluorescent range. Uh, go over 7000. So that's very handy. You uh, will give you a little more realistic lighting results. Let's put that back to uh, traditional 6500 daylight, or better yet, a more traditional uh, pure white light in CG. We'll just switch it back to color mode. Um, we have an intensity multiplier. That's pretty obvious what that does. We'll just blow out our scene, or likewise, too dim. The default. Uh, or rather, rather the units, we have lumens, uh, lumens per square meter, and watts, and also per square meter. Um, these really, the default units is usually just fine. Default units, you'll notice, let's switch it to back to four. Uh, default units will brighten the scene depending on the size of your lights. So if your light is larger, your scene will become brighter. If your light is smaller, uh, Likewise, the scene will become dimmer. Now, if you switch your light to lumens, this effect will not happen. Uh, lumens is not based on the light size. Um, now, there is a V-Ray bug, or V-Ray real-time preview bug, so we're using the RT right here. So if I scale this, you will see that the light does get, in, in fact, get brighter. Now, this is either an RT bug or actually these settings, lumens and watts, are really meant to be used for, uh, are used in conjunction with the V-Ray physical camera. So the effects of these may not be um, as useful unless you're using the physical camera. 
since this tutorial won't go over a physical camera, um, we'll stick to the default units. So the uh, sampling section, we have uh, subdivs. You'll notice I have one subdiv and I'm still getting perfectly nice rendering results. Subdivs, of course, is the light sample, so you know I can put that up really high and it won't make any difference. The reason being is because we're using the Niederhorst settings and all of these sam uh, samples are uh, happening based on the needs of the scene and the settings in our globals. So if you've watched that video, you never really need to touch light subdivs. Leave it at, I think it's default is 8. You'll, you'll never even touch it because uh, the Niederhorst settings will take care of that. Shadows, you can toggle shadows on and off. Um, another nice thing about V-Ray lights is that you can attach textures, in particular HDRI textures to generate lighting from, from your scene. So I've already got a texture hooked up to this. Let's uh, actually, let's, let's hypergraph this and I'll show you the texture. So we have a, uh, a gradient. Now this is commonly used in studio lighting. We'll, we'll attach a, uh, what looks like a soft light card so you'll have this center weighted uh, brightness and I've just multiplied a grid over top of that to create a, a grid pattern now we can see that a little better if we let's crank up the value of our light and change the shader on him go back to hypershade and apply we'll apply this uh, black glossy plastic and immediately you'll be able to see how the reflection is is working you can see the ramp in the reflections So that's commonly a commonly used trick for studio lighting is just hooking up any sort of textures into uh, into your light. Now let's point out one of the real advantages that we have over uh, standard Maya lights. We already sort of mentioned one example is the fact that Maya light you'll always have to manually adjust its uh, sampling or subdivs, whereas uh, V-Ray light you don't have to. You don't have to worry about it. Another one is when you use textures in a V-Ray light, you can adjust its texture resolution. So you want to, if you're doing a print res image and you just need your reflection texture to be a much higher res, you can sample it at, you know, 2048 or um, whatever you want. And in addition, we have this checkbox called texture adaptive. Now that will do a, a form of important sampling. So where the light is generating more, uh, more brightness, the samples will be weighted towards that direction, uh, thereby being a much more efficient method of sampling the texture. The idea of important sampling is is pretty important, and it's something that V-Ray has uh, a clear advantage of over Maya, uh, rather over Mental Ray. Uh, Mental Ray has very little important sampling going on. There is an IBL function in Mental Ray that will do a very slow important sample, but uh, V-Ray it's always adaptive or can always be adaptive so that the brightest areas of your texture or light will will be sampled the most and thereby you'd get accurate shadowing to uh, whatever texture you applied. This will become more important as we move on to the dome light. So other options in the uh, in the V-Ray light section and you can as we pull out we can see the light there's obviously the uh, invisible light um, which you can see is not currently working with uh, oh wait there it is V-Ray RT did update um, skylight portal is an option for when you want to use a light to concentrate ambient light from uh, say a sun sky system into a building so you can use a light instead of as a, a light to convert ambient light into direct light double-sided so if we turn invisible back off that light can now be a double-sided object. Let's hope it updates. There we go. So now we see it on both sides. And uh, we can affect diffuse specular and reflection separately. You can also um, slide in amounts of diffuse and specular contribution. So say you want to use only half of it, you can adjust that. Now that's a very nice extra feature. I've always wished for that in, in Mental Ray where I could uh, you know, see some specular contribution from a particular light, but not all of it. You can do that with V-Ray. And uh, so that's pretty much it for the, the V-Ray rectangle light. Let's move on to the uh, um, IBL or the V-Ray dome light.